Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Bouncing Back with Brighton. In today's episode we are going to play Bristol City away from home then we're going to face Arsenal at home and we'll review the fixtures. It's been a little bit of a rocky start. So following on from the opening day game against Leicester City we follow that up with a 2-1 away defeat to Watford. Not the best of starts. João Pedro with the goal to give Watford the lead. We equalised pretty much immediately through Baddy Yashil on the 29th minute. But then Tom Davies gave them the lead again just before half time. And as you can see, chances created for us. Absolutely nothing. So despite the match stats, we were awful, awful in this game. Following on from that was another hugely disappointing result. This time it was a 1 1 home draw against Southampton, which might not seem like the end of the world, but they were down at 10 men from the 52nd minute. We went in front through Rodrigo Marquez after they went down to 10 men in the 71st but Michael Obafemi equalised in the 82nd for them and again a 1-1 draw. Disappointing. But things started kicking in after this game. We faced Chelsea at home and Barlow got double, Aquino with one, Alvarado with one and Rodrigo Marquez with one making it. <clears throat> A comfortable 5-0 win against Chelsea. As I mentioned earlier in the last episode, Chelsea aren't the sort of team that they used to be. And John Soutar has made a very, very big mistake, my son. Next up was away from home against Wolves and managed to win this one 3-0. Marquez again giving us the lead through the penalty spot. Carlos Julio with the goal and Baddy Ashale as well. A little bit disappointing in the performance from this game despite the 3-0 win. But it's three points. We needed it. In the Premier League... It's obviously early days. We are sit currently sitting in fourth position on 10 points, three wins, one draw, one defeat, plus nine goal difference. Um, nobody really shining in terms of individuals for the player stats, but it's early days. And let's just get into the first match. We are facing Bristol City. Um, and Barlow had an absolutely fantastic game against Chelsea, so he's sort of making his claim for that first team spot on the right hand side. Carlos Julio has been performing much better than Abilio Neves at left-back, so he gets his first-team spot as well. But otherwise, the team's pretty much as you would expect. Butland and Gold, Tavares, Wood, Baddy Ashale and Carlos Julio in the defence. Benny Eben Aquino in the centre, with Embalo on the right, Gravenberch in the centre, Doku on the left and Rodrigo Marquez leading the line. Now, Gravenberch is about two game, two pool performances away from being dropped completely for Ramos. Um, there's still offers coming in from Barcelona and AC Milan, the other two teams, and you're talking like twenty-eight and a half million pound bids. He is only worth twenty-two and a half, so that I can see why they're making them sort of bids, but it's just completely derisory. Um, he is transfer listed by request, but he's not leaving the club, as far as I'm concerned. But if he's not performing, he is going to get dropped. So we kick off against Bristol City away from home. They are currently sitting bottom of the Premier League. And they've got a chance very early on. <laughs> I thought it was going one nil down straight away. I would not have been half surprised. But um, yeah, we'll see how we get on. That cannot be James Milner. He's surely retired. Nope, it is 36-year-old James Milner playing for Bristol City in the Premier League. I, that, actually, I shouldn't be surprised. Of course, James Milner's still playing. Highlight now 10 minutes in. Bristol City currently in possession, deep in their own half. Let's see if our boys can pinch the ball and create an opportunity. Aquino picks up the ball from Baddy Shale, plays it to Mbalo on the right-hand side. He gets in there, and Mbalo, I tell you what, he started this season absolutely fantastically. He did have a little bit of a knock to start the first three games or so, but he came in for that Chelsea game, scored two. He did okay last game as well, and he's got himself a goal in this game also. A great individual effort driving through the Bristol City defence. Keeper should probably do a little bit better at his near post, but I'm not complaining. 1-0. Another highlight now, Gravenberch with a free kick and ricochets back to him from the wall. And that is a foul. That's not a penalty though. That was surely a free kick. Oh, RF. I didn't even need VAR. I'm telling you now it's a free kick. Um, oh, RF, man. We've all got things to do. And there we are, outside the box, free kick. It's one of the things for FM20 um, that I hope they improve upon the VAR system. Particularly when you're watching in 3D highlights. I don't need to see the referee running over to the TV screen. For literally about a minute in game. You know you can you can fast forward that. Skip it. Highlight now. Jeremy Doku cutting inside from the left hand side. I don't know why he passed it back. He was completely in there. And then Bolo goes for the strike. Decent save by uh, the Bristol City keeper this time. Another highlight now. Bentley uh, with a free kick. It's played in. Marquez is there in the box. Somewhat. Oh my. How have we not scored there? How have we not scored? It turns out it was the keeper who kept us out. But uh, we should be 2-0 up now as Mbalo plays in the corner. 
It's, it's Marquez in the box. Good save by the keeper. Falls from again. And Rodrigo Marquez gets his fourth goal of the season. I think that's in six games. So not too bad of a start for our uh, main striker. Um, and we'll find ourselves 2-0 up going in just before half time. It was a little bit of a calamity by the Bristol City defence here. Marquez completely unmarked in the box. They had multiple opportunities to get rid of it, but they don't manage to do it. And we take full advantage 2-0. And there we are, 2-0, half-time. Jeremy Doku is struggling a little bit out there, so I am going to make that sub now. Uh, pointless trying to risk him in a game like this when we've got the likes of Roberto Alvarado sitting on the bench doing nothing. Um, we'll get him on on the left-hand side and see how he performs. Another highlight now, 60 minutes gone. Graham Birch goes for goal. He hits the post and then Baddy Ashiel completely scuffs and a perfect opportunity there. Did end up going out for a corner and Barlow plays it in. It's claimed by the keeper. Um, we've, had, we've had some really good opportunities in this game. We're just not taking them. After 65 minutes, seeing how this game's going, I'm quite happy to just make changes based on um, who I want to get game time. Abilio Neves is one of them players. Now I've got the option now. Sebastian Yaros, I want to give game time. I want to give Luis Gonsalves game time. I want to give Jose Mesquite the game time as well. Who do I prioritise? I think I priori prioritise Gonsalves purely because Badia Shield is struggling the most out of them positions that I could be changing. So um, we've had a lot of games thick and fast, really, um, in this opening opportunity. I think it's going to be like that throughout the first half of the season, purely down to how the World Cup's going to take place during the winter. So we've got to make use of our squad. Another highlight now, Bente here, but with the corners played in, it's cleared, but only as far as Gonsalves. Woods there, our centre-backs combine to get ourselves 3-0 up in front. Decent ball in by Bente here from the corner. It's cleared by Bristol, but again, they haven't been clearing the ball well enough and they certainly haven't been winning them second balls either. So we taking full advantage of that, 3-0. Another highlight to end the match, so well, it's probably the final highlight of the game. Solly March is still at Bristol City, by the way, if you remember him. Um, but uh, with 30 seconds over the clock, there we are. Referee blows for full time, a nice 3-0 win, a good clean sheet, a good win, despite Bristol not being the best of teams. Um, they've got a lot of older players still playing from the probably would have been decent five years ago basically but we've got arsenal coming up in a week so i will see you then one thing i feel to mention is the takeover that was suggested in july looks like it might be happening now um spanish investor gerard lopez says he would make 82 million pounds available for new players if takeover plans for brighton and hove albion are successful he's looking to buy the club for one billion pounds a lot of money and um, Brighton Hove Albion placed a board restriction and um, transfer embargo, whatever it is, transfer restriction. Um, so that will be good. But considering we've already got £50 million sitting there, is it £82 million on top of that? Or is it just an extra £32 million, which I think is what it will be. So it might not actually be as crazy as it first sounds. Um, won't change anything about the club unless they're looking at suckers, which I don't think they would. Um, th this is the kind of thing that we need to increase our commercial income. Um, financially we're not as part of the big boys yet you, you need to sort of start seeing your figures around like the Fulham, the Spurs the Fulham? How f how f oh no, Fulham's 38, Spurs no? no, Fulham are 51 Fulham are like perfect, why are they why are they getting so much? London club I guess but yeah, hopefully it's the sort of thing that will increase with a new board and all that sort of stuff and there we are, the takeover has been completed Things may never be the same again at the American Express Community Stadium after Spanish investor Gerard Lopez successfully completed his takeover of the Premier League club. According to BBC, Sussex Lopez has promised that he will stop at nothing to ensure Brighton and Hove Albion become one of the greatest forces in domestic and continental football. Oh, wait, mate, I was already doing that before you came. I didn't need your money. Personal message for Gerard Lopez. Forms you around 60 million has been pumped into the club's coffers and a new transfer budget has been calculated. Let's take a look at that. So, well, 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 136 million pound available for transfers and 683 grand available for wages. Our finances are now at 211 million pounds. I see the, the transfer revenue is still restricted. Um, but financially, lads, I think the summer that I've just did was completely unnecessary. I could have just went nuts and tried to sign as much as possible. Um, it doesn't look like they're interested in bringing in their own man, which is absolutely brilliant for me. But um, 136 million, it might be an interesting January, let's just say. 
So we are at kickoff against Arsenal. The only change that I've made to the starting eleven since the last game is Ramos is coming for the whingy Gravenberch. I'm just sick to death of him, honestly. I might consider selling Gravenberch in the January or even now. I don't really, and I can't, I can't afford to sell him now. But he's doing me head in, honestly, and it's. I think it is affecting team morale. Um, it's got to. The amount of whinging he's doing has got to. But apart from that, everything else remains the same. Gonsalves comes in for the injured um, Badia Shale. He picked up a knock. So apart from uh, Ramos and Badia Shale, everything else remains the same. But we kick off. We are at home. Arsenal have been an issue side for us in the past. They have the likes of Eden Hazard and stuff. They made some big signings early on in the save. And they've still got a really brilliant team. Um, did we were, I think we went in for Ruben Diaz and he ended up picking Arsenal over us, which is understandable. Um, so yeah, they've got a great side. We'll have to see how we go on today. But we did, of course, finish above them last season. So you never know. Maybe we do have the better of them. Highlight now, early on, Tavares manages to get a clear to Aquino. Drives down the left-hand side. Great challenge by Lucas Torreira. And the ball is in Arsenal's possession. Mkhitaryan switches the play to Eden Hazard on the left-hand side. Andre Lucas is through. Jack Butland with a decent save down to his right-hand side. It goes out for a corner. The corner is going to be whipped in by Torreira. We managed to get it clear as that penalty. It's, it's hit Nathan Bull's hand. It is a penalty. Jesus, man. How well, lads. It was not even VAR there. I just give it straight away. And Aiden Hazard somehow manages to get that past Jack Butland. How well, Jack? You should be keeping that out. Am I, am I wrong? I don't think he hits this hard enough. Let's have a look again. He does hit it quite hard, but Jack, how well? How are you, mate? You're, you're, you're one of the best English goalkeepers I could buy. You should be keeping that out. So not a great first half from us going by their match stats. Arsenal, of course, going in 1-0 up. We'll see how we go on for the second half. We're on a good run of form, and it will be such a shame for us to throw it away at the day. Highlight now, 55 minutes in, and it might be the first highlight where we actually do something. And Barlow gets on the edge. He takes a strike. Carlos Wagner with a massive save for Arsenal. I thought that was surely the equaliser, and Barlow... Has been doing really well in front of goal recently. But he gets a corner in and Marquez is there. And you would, if he gets that on target, it's going in as well. Two really, really good opportunities for us there. Highlight now. Terrell with the free kick for Arsenal. Lacazette goes for goal from... Oh, man. Oh, man. Lacazette with the strike. Oh, it's offside. It's offside. No worries, lads. Nothing to worry about. Gravenberch, I am so sorry. Get back in this side. Please do something. <laughs> 14 minutes to go, we are going to look to make another change. Uh, and Barlow's on the yellow and he's struggling a little bit. We'll get Sebastian Yaros on for him on that right-hand side. As Gravenberg has got a free kick. <laughs> should, should I have dropped him, lads? Do you think I should have dropped him? Honestly, why have I done that? I'm purely cutting off my nose to spike my face with Gravenberg. He's our best attacking midfielder. I will be an absolute fool to drop him and sell him. Listen, fool. Another highlight now, when Lucas Torreira looks like he is about to get his second yellow card and gets sent off for Arsenal. They are down to 10 minutes, only 10 minutes remaining. Would be great if we managed to get back and win this, but we don't really deserve it. Um, but is there any opportunity later on? Gravenberch picks up the ball deep and drives forward and finds Yaros on this right-hand side. Gets the ball whipped in, Doku's back post, it's cleared. And now Arsenal could potentially break now. We managed to win the ball back though with Carlos Julio on the left hand side. The ball falls to Jeremy Doku in the box. He's through and he gets his second goal of, well, not his second goal of the game. Our second goal of the game. His first for the season. And we are somehow 2-1 up against Arsenal. This is completely undeserved. But I think, I might, I think Gravenberg has changed things. <laughs> I honestly think he has. And Doku with a goal to put us 2-1 up. This is surely now with Arsenal down to 10 men. No, the three points. Let's 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 just go very defensive for the final five minutes and see if we can hold out for the win. Please don't do this. Please don't. Butland claims that is going to be our shield for this game. Surely with ten seconds remaining, we won't throw it away now. And there's the full time whistle. Brighton two, Arsenal one. Absolutely massive, massive victory that was. Completely undeserved, but we'll take it. Come on, lads. Gravenberch, you're in the team for the next game. Let's just sit. Let's just put it that way. Now, before we end today's episode, we do have the Champions League group stage draw happening in a few days' time. So I'll quickly get there and we'll see who we're facing. Before we get there, Gravenberch is now willing to talk to me about a new contract. He's only on about 46 grand a week at the minute. You're not getting a minimum fee release clause. You can get lost. 
Um, five years, 77. We'll knock that down a little bit, see what he says. 10%. You, I'm not giving him a yearly wage rise either, to be honest with you. Um, you're not getting that. You can have £80,000 per week. And now we are. Ryan Grubbenbirch has signed up for another five years. He's staying. He's staying at the club. <laughs> So here we are at the Champions League group start stage draw. We will, of course, be in the bottom pot. So it's going to take quite a while for them to get round to us. So we're just going to fly through the first couple of pots to see which sort of group we would actually fancy going into. Now, none of these look particularly appealing. So we can't be in Liverpool or Arsenal's group, and I would have preferred Arsenal's by the look of it. Uh, Porto, Atletico Madrid could be a potential option. But the rest of them, they'll look like pretty pretty rough group so we'll fly through the third seeded uh, teams nothing really too changing there and we're drawn for us now who where we're going how we where are we there we are juventus monaco and feyenoord oh juventus and monaco how are monaco doing on this game i know they've got some fantastic regens because i've i've wanted half of them and he's a fantastic player as well listen it's going to be a rough um Group G are definitely going to be tough. Juventus and Monaco. Feyenoord are probably a decent side as well, but you would expect us to be beating them. So we could at least get to the Europa League knockout stages if we can't quite qualify for the Champions League knockouts. I need to have a little bit more confidence, so I think we can get second in this group. I think Juventus will probably shoe in for top. They've got some unbelievable players like some Moise Keane and stuff. Will have been pretty much fully developed at this point. Um... But I think Monaco could be beatable. We'll have to wait and see. But in terms of the next episode, what are we going to do? We are, of course, going to come back for the first game. i tell you what we'll do. A Champions League double header. We will face uh, Monaco and Juventus in the next episode. There will be two Champions League games. We'll skip past the Middlesbrough game in between. Um, and we'll see. How we'll, we'll be able to judge then how our team is looking against the two bigger sides in, the, in our group. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.